What do you think about this year's Nobel Peace Prize winners? I think that they are very brave people um, who are doing something that not a lot of people dare to do and who are taking, yeah, on a very, very big fight uh, within just a, a much broader context than just what they're simply doing by, by being journalists or by being heads of newspapers and magazines. And I think they're very inspiring. It's not just the Nobel Peace Prize that I got, got awarded this year. You also won a prize. Can, could you tell us about it? Yeah, so I participated in an essay competition um, by the Nobel Peace Center. Um, that's part of the Igniter Fellowship. And I saw it promoted by my university. And so I decided to participate. And I submitted an essay about the oppression of Mexican journalists when they try to write about corruption and just the abuse that Mexican journalists in general receive. And so I wrote about that and how it's related yeah, to freedom of speech. And I submitted that. And then two weeks later, I was told that I won. Um, and that I would be able to come to Oslo, all expenses paid, and that I would be able to attend these events. And it's just been, yeah, very, a very surreal, very unbelievable prize and opportunity. Do you think that the youth will start to care more after you won with this text? I think so, or at least I hope so. Um, I know that I want to, now that I know how important it is to, to talk about this more outside of an academic context, outside of just writing essays, I do want to start sharing more and you know share my ideas and share, share the, the things that I've written lately. Um, and I do think that people will see that it's not just something for grown-ups to write about or for the journalists themselves to speak of, of the, the abuse that their peers face, but also for, for us as 13-year-olds, as 21-year-olds to start talking about and becoming more aware of. So I think that, yeah, awareness will increase, hopefully. Why is freedom of speech so important to you? Because there's just so much, at least in my own country, that I see that needs to be fixed or that needs to at least be addressed. And there's even even writing the essay that I wrote, I felt a bit scared, you know, if, if I speak and I talk about how I'm not happy with my own government or, or certain people in my country, what's happening, I was a bit, you know, nervous writing the essay. And I think that nervousness shouldn't be there. You know, we should be able to talk about the things we're not happy with and to talk and to criticize what's going on in our country. And for example, to speak about the corruption in our country and how it's just, it's invaded every aspect. Um, and to be able to speak about that and to, re to criticize without fear of, of any, you know, any negative consequences. Your home country is one of the most uh, dangerous country to be in for journalists. What do you think about that? It's sad. <laughs> it's it's very sad. Also, for example, I I and just it's just listening that you know it it doesn't feel good that that that's the situation and that that's you know the place I live in. Um, but yeah, when I was looking up the things for my essay and to to update it a bit. I saw that in just the, the first semester of this month, of this year, 362 journalists have been uh, assaulted in Mexico. And that's just such a big number, you know, and it's not just a number, it's, it's actual people. Um, and so I think it's mostly sad and just very disappointing to think about. But uh, I also want to say that, you know, even though we see these numbers that Mexico is so much more than the danger and the crime and the corruption. So I do want to say that just as in any country, there is the bad things. Mexico is also, I mean, I, I think it's a very beautiful country full of beautiful people. Why do you think uh, it has turned out like that? I think there's not a simple answer to that. <laughs> uh, I think the things that have made the Mexico the way it is, and in the aspect of journalism at least, are, it's very complex, and it has a lot to do with just the, the, like the political institutions that we have. Um, I mentioned it also in my essay, you know, how the, this history that we have 
of certain parties being dominating in the media has allowed for that sort of abuse to be enabled and to be allowed to happen. And also, yeah, the lack of, the lack of, yeah, laws and, and of protection and also the big amount of impunity also makes it very easy for that to happen. But I think it's a much more complicated uh, scenario than I also talk about in my essay. There are so many ways you could approach to explain why it's like that. But I think, yeah, the, the institutions that we have is one of the reasons. What can we do to change that and make Mexico a less dangerous country for journalists? I think the first step well, at least it depends on the we that we're talking about. So if it's in general and we could do anything, I think changing it so that there's more protection. And there are, yes, yeah, I say in my, in my essay, there are some mechanisms. So there are steps in and, yeah, uh, processes in place to protect journalists, but they're not very effective. Uh, and there have been instances where people who are protected by these mechanisms still get killed still get assaulted so there are things in place but they're not very effective so i think increasing the effectiveness of that and also addressing the impunity so actually bringing justice for the journalists that are abused and bringing justice for the people who carry out this abuse and then if we talk about the we of here in this room uh of people who are yeah those of us who are younger i think just awareness starting to to see what is it like in, in your country, you know, like looking up how, what the situation is for the journalists in your country, just starting to talk about it. Uh, because I myself wasn't aware of this before writing this essay, you know, how bad it was in Mexico. So I think, yeah, looking up, seeing what the context is like and just starting a conversation. Yeah. How has the last days been here in Oslo? Amazing. <laughs> they have been, yeah, unbelievable, very surreal. It's still, I feel like I haven't processed yet everything that's going on because I just, yeah, it just feels like a dream. You know, I arrived and it's snowing and it's beautiful. And yesterday I was taking on a tour uh, around and we went to the Christmas market and that was beautiful. But just the whole th like the the fact that I'm here, you know, in the noble days and that I was able to attend the prize ceremony, it's just an amazing opportunity and it just, I feel so lucky that I was given this and being able to go to the exhibition today and the concert, I'm super excited. And yeah, it's just, it, it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you.